previously on High Scores, High Stakes. So this week's challenge game is Destruction All-Stars. I mean, we all know the real story behind Destruction All-Stars. And the real story is this. It was a £70 game that had very little game in it. That blows and my mind. It lost 80% of its player base in eight days. So this is Carnado. Round one is Carnado, which is bump into each other, destroy each other, and then take the gears that you're given from each piece of damage and then driving it into banking it in the tornado in the middle of the arena. If anyone destroys you on your way to banking, then you lose them all. You had to go through a tutorial to unlock any of the arena modes. Okay. So until you did the quick wee, this is how you jump, this is how you drive, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, you couldn't play the game. <laughs> That's now crazy. the tutorial's the tutorial's over in about five minutes, if even. Um, I could have sworn that there was a third game, but apparently not. Maybe I've just assumed that uh, Mayhem was split it. into two different versions. Then, but there we are. <laughs> I, I don't know, mate. I have absolutely no idea. I don't. I don't believe so. The only two I ever played in was Carnado and Mayhem. Uh, but the single player stuff, well, the bot battles, because the single player stuff is. Um, Paywalled. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Here's some missions. Oh, by the way, it, we need premium currency in order for you to unlock these. It's madness. Like, yeah. So then that means then this is the how we're going to give the points out this week. So we're going to have points for first, second, third, fourth. Just the normal points. There's no bonus points or anything this week uh, because we couldn't think of a fair way of giving it bonus points. So first this week, getting three points is Sherry. Sherry is officially going to be in double digits. That is Things incredible. Things you love to see, yes. I love to see it. I love to see it. In second place is you, Tomahawk, picking up two points. I am in third place, picking up a single point, which means Cardinal picks up the zero. He's come fourth. That, well, last, that last game, he wasn't happy about it. But do you want to know what? I don't care. No, that's it. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah. That's that's two fourth places in three weeks. So, yep. Now on to this week's episode. Hi everyone, um, welcome to episode seven of season two of High Scores High Stakes. <laughs> The podcast that's striving for perfection, but always ends up face first in the wall. I'm your host, Mr. Lover Lover, and with me is my co-host. Beautiful. I love these intros now. They're <laughs> like so topical, so on point. They're amazing. Mate. Big hint for the game. Yes, that's it. <laughs> oh, no, Tomahawk here just today. Um, I'm good, Lover. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's a bit weird to have no the two of us. Ah, uh, sure. Online. We're well used these days now. This is harking back to the side quests anyway. <laughs> I think, personally, I think I made a mention last week that Cardinal seems to disappear whenever he hasn't done too well in the challenge. <laughs> so, I don't no, know how it. he's it goes done off this to lick week. His wounds. I don't know how he's no, done this week, do I. but I think that we could probably assume it ain't that great. His I excuse? The excuse for not being here now. It's controversial, I think. It's controversial. It's a bit Premier League football-y, isn't it? Oh, I can't do it tonight because I've done this thing to myself. It's like that time where you, you remember Asensio couldn't play because he had an ingrown <laughs> hair on his leg. It's <laughs> it's along the lines of... It might be along even the lines worse. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> it might be even worse. We're not going to embarrass him by saying why he's not here, but let's just presume that... He hasn't done particularly well in this week's challenge, much like he didn't do particularly well in last week's challenge. So let's do a quick wee recap of last week's challenge, which was, of course, Destruction All-Stars. Last week, Cardinal, for that the second time in three games, has picked up That's the right. big fat zero. So he came fourth. I came third and picked up a single point. Uh, you came second, Tom. The streak continues. Pew, pew. Yes, we're and getting there. Shock of all shocks, Sherry has won another challenge. Another challenge. That's right. He's winning individual challenges now. He's really like come into a bit of a a bit of a stride this season. 
he, he really has. And do you know what? It's good to see. It's good to see. I think Sherry could do a little bit of a streak of wins. Um, we'll see if he can continue it this week. <laughs> but <laughs> who knows? I don't know. I don't know. He's been very quiet and coy about it. The messages he's been sending me regarding this week's challenge could also explain his absence this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the end of last week, then the league table was like this. You were top with 25 points, Tom. Um, Cardinal and I were joint second on 20 points each. And Sherry was sitting strong, secure. Our foundation last season, still our foundation this season with 11 points. At least he's hit double digits. Double digits, it's, exactly. It's one step further than he went last season. Let's just be clear here. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to say about last week. So what is High Scores High Stakes? Really simple. It's four friends playing lots and lots of gaming challenges to compete in a league table. Every week we play a different game. Every week we're competing in a challenge in that game. Um, the winner will get three points. Second place will get two points. Third place gets one point, And fourth place gets zero points. It's really, really that simple. So it is. And because Cardinal's not here, I feel as though I should be talking to someone else. I mean, I'm always, by habit, looking to go, what about you, Cardinal? Are you going to say about any of this? Because <laughs> he can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing, he's nothing to chime in on. I keep doing expect him because we're obviously on Discord doing this. I just expect his little face to show up on the icon and he goes, sorry, I'm late. I'm just going <laughs> to do this. But no, I don't think he's, I don't think he's coming today. He's, he's definitely not. He's definitely not. So... Now that that's all done in record-breaking time of maybe about three minutes, it leads us to say, Tomahawk, what are you playing? Right. It's not been a very exciting week this week. Spooky season is still still ongoing, we'll say that much. Uh, the House of Ashes has just come to PlayStation Plus, so that it, has. Has down, it has downloaded and is now in my library. Um, so that's next on the list. But in the meantime, I started to play until dawn, and I feel as if now I can't let that go until it's reached its natural conclusion until you for, see the it for the fifteenth time. We'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good game. I don't know if it's fifteen playthroughs worth of good, but it is a good game. It was a very that's good it. Game. No, that's what I was saying just before I record as well. It's like there was a little bit with Mike and Jess, the two characters, where it did a bit of an outcome that I've never ever experienced before on any amount of playthroughs that I've done. So it still is throwing out little bits and little surprises, but still a great game. Yeah, it is. By comparison to other supermassive games at the minute, you can tell it's aged a little bit, but it's still great. It still is very much keeps you on your toes. You you can't really break contact from the screen or at, at any point, really. Yeah, yeah, otherwise you're, you'll pay for it. It'll punish you big time. Big time. Um, it's a game, actually, I remember I bought that on disc. Forgot I bought it on disc. So and did I. Bought, I. It, bought it digitally as well. It's one of the very few games I've done with the same <laughs> console. <laughs> my PlayStation 4 games were kept in various boxes in my wardrobe. And I remember going, I want to play Until Dawn. I'll buy it. It was on offer. I think it was like 13, 14 pounds or something. I bought it on offer and then about two months later, was going through my PlayStation 4 games in the boxes and went, I don't remember I own that already. Yeah. <laughs> I remember buying that. And it was Here a PlayStation go. exclusive, if I remember correctly, it's, wasn't it? It still is. To, as far as still I'm aware, is. you cannot play it anywhere else other than on PlayStation, which is... Interesting. Because I thought, I think Sony must have part funded it. Surely. Surely. must be. There's a reason for that because I think every other game they've... Every game since has been on everything except for... Every console, the, except for like the Switch or something like that, yeah. Except for Hidden Agenda. Hidden Agenda is on another PlayStation exclusive. And that was only because it used PlayLink. Remember that short oh, yes. Sony thing? Let's use our con our phones as our controllers. <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting premise, but I just think it's maybe lacking in execution. I liked it. I'm not going <laughs> to I, I had a... Me and Mrs. Lover had a heck of a lot of fun on That's Me, and I can't remember what well, that's the, the one with the head, like, it's kind of no, like... It's like Buzz. It was like Buzz. Oh. Only a lot of the that's questions right, yes. were, yeah, it was good fun. And there was another one, um, another quiz game was quite good fun as well, but I wouldn't want to play a game with it. Um, I think uh, Hidden Agenda is basically, it's a cop drama, and I think it's, the choices appear on your phone rather than on the screen. 
So basically you're watching a movie and you're making these choices, but you, one of you is a plant. So it's one player's job to sabotage the other players. Oh, so nice. by, by picking the purposely wrong decisions all the time, and you have to sort of de- deduce who is the, the plant, the mole, effectively. Oh, it's excellent. Be, it, got, it reviewed middling, but from players' perspective, apparently it's great if you have like six, I think you can play with up to eight players. Oh so wow! Apparently, apparently, if you get a full like lobby, and it's all people in your living room as well. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, it's all local then. Yeah, mm-hmm. that way. That's Which good. I think that's a superb idea. Superb Something idea. different, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But you know, in terms of <clears throat> what I'm playing this week, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay the course on the on the the sort of spooky games. Uh, so I've plenty to keep me going. For another mm. couple of weeks at least anyway so that's it that's it it's not long now until halloween in furnace i yeah I mean, i've been doing the same sort of thing you're trying to play exclusively hard games and i've been playing a, a few a few at the same time um i think i said last week i was playing through parasite eve um, yes that's on right the, on the steam deck i remember cardinal making a comment saying isn't that a really hard game and i was like oh, it's hard enough like no it's it's ridiculously hard it gets <sighs> it gets brutal. Uh, there was one point without spoiling too much. Uh, your character is on a rooftop, <laughs> and there may or may not be a helicopter, like a helicopter or a plane or something flying towards it, and you have to escape. Um, and I must have died in that part. Oh God! Four, five times, just because obviously it's pre-rendered backgrounds. That old classic Square PS One thing where they pre-rendered the backgrounds, and there was the escape route was quite well camouflaged now the thing is <laughs> it takes place after a boss fight and there's a whole heap of cutscenes um, because it's playstation 1 you can't skip the cutscenes so when you die in that section it throws you all the, all way, the way back, back and you have to watch about 5 minutes of cutscenes only to go there and go where do I, where do You're I go no better off yeah Yeah. there's like 2 doors in the roof it's near the 2 doors and you only get enough time to really check one because your character has ridiculously slow movement speed. I think I said that last week as well. Um, I've been playing that and losing the rag of it and quitting it quite often. I got past that part, but it's just hit a point now where I think I have been spending points incorrectly and I've made it okay. more, more difficult for myself than what it probably should be. But it is what it is. I will finish it because it is, honestly, it's a... A really good game. Oh yeah, so. no, I remember like way back in the day, it was very much a, I don't want to say cult classic, but it's kind of one of them games that just has this like bizarro following. But it's pretty, and it's a pretty decent game as well. But uh, no, it's it's been such a long time since I've played it or gone even near it, so yeah, might a, have to go looking for it. It's a strange one because it's like, as far as I'm aware, it's the only game of its kind I've ever played. It's it is a rpg with strat well survive survival horror i hate using that term because it's not survival horror there's very little resource management in it but it is angling towards survival horror and it's the only one i can think of even its own sequels are nothing like this one the yeah. second one is much more survival horror and the third one is a is an atrocious third person shooter in the playstation portable and it's awful <laughs> um but yeah apart from that i've been playing a game on the Sega Dreamcast called Zombie Revenge. No way. Are you aware of it? No, but right. Sega Dreamcast, that's a hell of a yeah, uh, again, throwback um, console. Again, I have recently put all my Dreamcast discs, backed them up, put them on a Steam Deck and playing it through an emulator. But one of them is, is Zombie Revenge, which was a game, I think it's, it might be the most expensive game I have ever bought. Um, It's basically House of the Dead 2, but as a... 3D scroll and beat them up, and it is every bit as Incredible. good as it sounds. Every bit as good as it sounds. Hard as heck, and designed to eat your time and your money because it's an arcade game. Because of course, it's on the Sega Dreamcast. Every, <laughs> every game's an arcade game, but it is actually really quite good. The voice acting is atrocious, but I think it's purposefully so. It's all cheesy. It's like a it's a bit tongue in cheek that way. Yeah, it's a bit it's, deliberate. It's as Bad forward slash good as House of the Dead 2. And it's just really good looking, really crisp, really clean, really good game. Um, 
don't know if I count it as a horror, but they're zombies and you have to punch, shoot, and kick him in the face. It sounds so, like horror, to be fair. I yeah. think that ticks the box for Spooky <laughs> yeah. Month, anyway. Yes. I will give an honorable shout out. I say honorable shout out. I, I installed it, played the tutorial, and then deleted it. Um, Call of Cthulhu. Oh, yeah. Literally, yeah. literally couldn't hack it, had to turn it off, had to delete it, cast it out into the into the abyss i hated every second of it no <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna give a call out to this game i hate <laughs> like i started playing it because it just i was like all right it looks something different and i can't tell if it decides if it wants to be first person third person the voice acting's just bad and the synchron synchronization of it is even worse sounds amazing <laughs> Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like the darkness, but not nearly as well executed. Okay, the darkness is a great game. Yeah, exactly. That's and then because uh, it had that sort of similar vibe and animation style, and then I was like, no. But then the character kind of reminds me of Booker Dewitt from Bioshock Infinite, so I'm like, okay. I could get behind him. But no, I could. I don't know. I couldn't hack it. I had to turn it off and just remove it from the hard drive. <laughs> fair, fair enough. I am also. <laughs> Also got to give a shout out. I bought a game. It must be seven years ago. <laughs> and it's one of the love of specials. Let's buy a game. Never play it. You know that sort of standard. side. The standard style of, of me. Uh, it is a Japanese horror game. And it is a up version of it. It's just a PlayStation 2 game. But they up it for PlayStation 4. It's called... Uh, White Knight, a labyrinth named School. Um, Never heard of it. It's always on sale. I think I got it for like a fiver. Um, and it is, I'm not very deep into it. I started playing it, must have been Saturday maybe. And uh, basically you go to, you forget something at school and you go back and you break into the school to get a book. It's a book for studying. And you go into the school, and the janitor is... I don't know how to say it. Crazy. The janitor, okay. wants, the janitor is there to clean the school and keep it safe. And he will hunt you down and chase you whilst demons are also invading the school. It's weird, but it's actually really good. <laughs> I've it's just loaded really it up good. on the PlayStation app here. So we've got... Classic horror for a new generation, a contemporary reimagining of the notorious 2001 first person Korean survival horror. It's Korean. <laughs> it's, it's really good. So it's all first person. I'm not very far into it. I've basically gotten to a point, I've done the tutorial effectively, um, and I've now have to explore the skill. But the janitor is relentless. Imagine Mr. X, but with a broom. And he will chase you. If he catches you, he will take a... I don't know what happens when he catches you, actually. I don't know if it's an instant death or if he just takes a rake of your health off you and you can get the okay. escape. But the whole game revolves around, as far as I can tell, revolves around you trying to hide from the janitor while trying to solve the mystery of what's going on in the school. It's, yeah, it seems from, really interesting. From the look of it, the bullet points here say suspenseful cat and mouse gameplay, terrifying ghost encounters, mind-bending puzzles, survival horror mechanics... A multiple ending, so this actually sounds like a game that I could really get by. Actually, <laughs> it's it's really not bad. If you see it on offer, pick it up. It's actually uh, I will go I will go deeper into it. I think it's, it's <laughs> it seems really interesting. It's really ugly, um, but it's quite the horror is effective. The horror is really effective. Nice. I just want to see what happens normal. when we get to November first. Do we just go to Christmas <laughs> games then, or what happens? Do we? <laughs> I just I ditch know. what we're playing. <laughs> Santa's Great Adventure or something. <laughs> or The Escapists. Uh, that had a or really just good play Christmas Dead by Daylight with a Christmas skin on it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> just get stuck into like Fortnite or something. I have no idea what we're going to uh, do. Crazy. Cardinal won't miss it, that's for sure. No, no, yeah. he'll, he'll be glad to see November 1st. He'll be glad to see <laughs> us talk about something that's not a spooky game. I know. The best part is I've been stockpiling horror games for October, but I've gotten to the point where I have far too many and one month is not enough, so I may continue on until I get three Happy the days. vast majority of them, I think. I think. And that's just the way it has to be. Has to. And we're doing God's work. That's what the like we don't call us high scores horror stakes for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is exactly it. That's exactly it. And speaking of high scores, I would love right now to be able to transition with a super smooth segue into it, into name that game, but it'll be a one-sided affair. And after all the work I've done, probably be a pass as well. (laughs) (laughs) And I actually went out my way this week to get two games so we had a theme again and keep it nice and quite large releases. But I guess here, Cardinal can't be barred being here. Then we're not going to play it. We're not going to play it. We'll roll over. That's what we'll do. We'll just roll them over next week. That's an idea. Next week, a bumper double episode of Name That Game. I hope you're looking forward to 25 minutes of absolute (laughs) silence, listeners, because that's what it's going to be. Pass. Wait. (laughs) What's the dragon's dog going to pass? (laughs) I thought the best part is next week's Halloween. It's going to be a horror special. Cardinal's not going to have a ball day. (laughs) Ah, incredible. Can't wait. I can't wait. So speaking of can't wait, because we're not playing Name That Game, I suppose there's no point in postponing it. Let's get straight to the challenge game this week, which is, of course, Picks the Cat. And let's get there. Right, Picks the Cat. This week's challenge is possibly, from Crash Bandicoot, definitely the most simple of our challenges. Picks the Cat has a main game, and there are timed modes in it. So there is a three minute, a five minute and a 10 minute mode. We went with the five minute mode. Really simple. All you have to do is get a high score in it. So Pix the Cat, for those who may not know, Pix the Cat is a game that came out 2014 exclusively on PlayStation. And it was incredible. It is a proper um, indie game, a proper niche game and a proper cult classic. I personally think it's one of the best puzzle games that's been made in the last 20 years. I, for me personally, <sighs> yeah, I think Pix the Cat is right up there with Tetris. I think it's cracking oh, no, game. Absolutely great game. I still remember when it first came out and to say that you emotionally bullied our group chat into all of us buying it, getting it would be an understatement. Mm-hmm. You were obsessed with this game, to be fair. Yes, I was. It's it's just an incredible game, an incredible game. And it's one of the very few games I did a review on it way back when, when I used to be a blogger rather than a podcast. <laughs> uh, I give it a glowing review, an absolute glowing review. I give it a 9 out of 10. And it is, I think, the only time a developer has ever reached out to me on the back of a review. Uh, past the games reached out, thanked me for the review. And they gave me a review code for their follow-up game, which was Pang, I think, uh, which wasn't as good. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as good. But Pix the Cat is incredible. So basically the premise of Pix the Cat is Snake meets Pac-Man. Basically every screen is a maze. On the maze there are little circles, targets, where you have to deliver ducks to. Now, every screen will have a different number of ducks. And the idea is you get all your ducks collected and then you deliver them in order to get a perfect screen. Starts off really simply where a square room, eight ducks, and you can't go wrong. But the further you go into the game, the faster the movement gets, the The more more complex the mazes get, the more enemies there are, And all of a sudden, you have all these mechanics pile up on you. And like every great arcade game of the past, it looks so simple. But because of it's just mechanically deep and mechanically perfect, everything works exactly the same, exactly every time. And before too long, you are in this screen where you have no idea how you're meant to deliver all these ducks without delivering one too early and cracking the rest of the eggs. Uh, That's it, yes. You lose your multiplier if you you deliver the eggs too early. Yeah. And it can really knock you back, really hurt your, your score. Yeah, if you crack the duck eggs, any duck you deliver after that, I think the score's halved. I think that's how it works. Oh, it affects wow, okay. your score. So you lose a whole chunk of your multiplier. So your multiplier is 
on the top right of the screen it's a like a super bar in a street fighter game it's one three five and ten multiplier yeah, yeah. i think and fever time <laughs> um, fever time gives me anxiety and I don't, favorite. I don't want to, I don't want to have to listen to it four times over. But this is what we do for the podcast. We have to this, listen. To... <laughs> this is it. Fever time is effectively maximum combo. The screen goes desaturated. It goes black and white, and yeah. Pix is at its maximum pace. And it's something I did not know until playing it for this podcast. When you are in fever time, you can attack enemies. No, I didn't know this points. until I didn't know this until accidentally doing it for this a challenge yep same same i had no idea that mechanic existed so even after what nine years pix the cat is still surprising us it is an incredible game if you want to play it and i do wholeheartedly recommend you go download pix the cat right now it's not often we do this in this podcast i feel so passionately about pix the cat i think it deserves a player base and go download it it is seven pound on playstation seven pound on xbox and it is a fiver. Well worth it. A fiver on Steam. You don't. You can run it on a potato. You can run it on a pocket <laughs> calculator. <laughs> it's a great, great, great game. And it was one of the challenges I was most looking forward to on on this season. When we said, "Well, by picks the cat," it was the one. I was like, "This is the one. This is a great challenge." And it is. That's it was it. so much fun. The game is. I hate the games for what it wants to be. It's absolutely perfect. Oh, it hits every bullet point. Every box is ticked for it. Like it's mm-hmm. just, it's a great wee puzzle based game. You know, I think just even the, even picks the cat himself is just a cool wee character as well. See, I love the art style of it. Love uh, the art style of it. The art style of it reminds me of like, of Choo Choo Rocket. Do you remember Choo Choo Rocket, the Dreamcast? Yes. Yes. Reminds me the art style reminds me of that. Some of the gameplay reminds me of that. Um, but it's all neon, and I love the whole premise of it. So you bit the game up. Picks the cat is sitting in a living room with a controller in his hand, playing Picks the cat on the TV. And then when you hit start, the game goes into his TV, and you're playing his game. But every subsequent maze, once you clear one maze, another maze will open up inside that maze. So you're going deeper and deeper and deeper into the video game. And it's just, it's so good. It is That's so, it. so good. I love this game. <laughs> Did you notice uh, it tracks you how far down you go? Bottom, mm-hmm. bottom left of your screen. It, did, it didn't realize that it did this. How many levels? It'll track how deep you go into the game. Yep. Uh, yeah, That's it'll tell you how many nice levels indicator. you are. Yeah, really nice indicator, and it doesn't just tell you what room you're in. Like to go back into it, it'll subtract the number and then put the number yeah, back on. Come when back you're, in. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that mechanic. So that's another mechanic. So when you clear one maze, a portal will open into the next maze. But when you go into the next maze, the portal stays open, so you can leave it and go back to the previous level. Some mazes require you to go in between the two levels in order to get a perfect which is something I realized on this run. Um, I don't know how many of the portals stay open. And it's something I want to investigate. Can you go back up to level one from level 15? That's the question I'm asking. Well, I have to go back on this, but I think you can. I think the game won't no. stop you. I don't see why it would. But in the interest of this challenge, we're about high scores. We're not about seeing who can ascend the levels quickly. <laughs> yes. So in this challenge, basically, we're, we're in it for a high score. Uh, five minutes let's see at the highest score you can so you pick up points by collecting ducks delivering ducks you get bonus points based on your multiplier so it can be uh, multiplied by two multiplied by five multiplied by ten um, depending on your multiplier um, if you get a perfect which is you get all your duck eggs and then deliver them without delivering too early then you get another multiplier on top a perfect screen and then there's other ways you can pick up points is by getting fever time and taking on enemies. So each enemy you kill, I think, is 10,000 points. Yeah. And it is just, it's just so simple yet so, like all the great games before it, like Tetris, like Dr. Mario, like Columns, like Puyo Puyo. It's so simple, but it gets so hard really fast. <laughs> yeah it gets absolutely. difficult and it's 
it's just that pushing yourself on and trying to better yourself. And what I love about picks is, whereas Pac-Man and all that sort of stuff, Pac-Man's always the same mazes every time. Nothing changes. Picks does change every time. I don't know if you noticed. So the mirrors, it, uh, it the mirrors, mirrors itself each playthrough, and or the... it will reverse where your eggs are and where the collection points yeah. is, and it does all this, and that's just to stop you from rote memorization of every single level. the The solution to the puzzle will never change, but the layout will, and it it can trip you up, and it trips me up at big time. It tripped me up in this playthrough. There's one screen in particular where I was kicking myself because I took the path of the previous layout. Yes. No, absolutely. Also, what will trip you up is assuming that we're doing the three-minute mode and you put up the monster score and a PB only to be told, yeah, we're doing the five-minute one. So that was a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a shell shock for me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and I also submitted that a month ago. So I was just like, I'm, I'm in for it. I'm three points. I'll take that all day long. And then everyone goes to me, we're doing the five minute mode, Tom. Catch yep. a grip. <laughs> yep. Come on. Wake up here. Here are you, Sherry. <laughs> um, yeah. One more thing I want to mention before, before we get into it is, I don't know if you noticed there's ghosts. So you can have your, your PB ghosts on screen at all times so you can sort yes. of see what you did and it is i find it sometimes got in the way a little bit a distraction absolute mm-hmm. distraction because yeah. i did it i didn't do it with me as such i did it with like the worldwide the leader global leader yeah, yeah the global leader i followed his lead and just went i don't know what's going on here so it, it was more of a hindrance than a help really i will also say this is the only time doing this a challenge where the dual sense failed me i i found that pex wasn't nearly as responsive on the dual sense than he would have been on the the dual shock four just saying how did you control him uh directional buttons because i'm okay. normal <laughs> yes that's what i was gonna say uh <laughs> if you play this with the analog stick you need to take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror folks it's a d-pad game all day long and you don't need to worry about anything else it's four directions and you're good to go you're good to go. I didn't. I didn't have any issues with the uh, dual sets. I found that the button. I found that the direction buttons just were a bit. Maybe because my controller's still relatively new. It maybe mm-hmm. hasn't been broken in as much. But I found just kind of the buttons sometimes didn't. Maybe my Mushy. thumb action just wasn't as good as I'd hope it would be. But I mean, the the proof's going to be in the score and the footage. So yep. uh, we did to save time. We did do a pre wheel that's right yep yep so the Love running you order have the running order yes so the running order is as follows again we have i've we have no idea how anyone's done i think we can make inferences based on previous and previous attempts exactly <laughs> i think we can make inferences on previous and we can make inferences on who is here and who isn't here so the running order is as follows the first run we're going to see is cardinals the second run is sherry's the third run is Tomahawks, and the last run is my run. And I don't want to alarm you, but my score was pretty spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good. Uh, this is one of those challenges where I posted a score on my leaderboard from 2015, and it was the highest score I had gotten in the game. Um, it's, it's actually on my old YouTube channel still there. Picks the cat number one. There was never a Pixie Cat number two, just to say it. But it took me four hours this week, four hours to better it. And I was like, but once I broke that, it all, my score just kept on going That's it. Up once, going you're, up. once you're past a certain threshold, kind of, it's, it's not like Crash back in the day where like you're talking fractions of seconds. You actually can like make a hell of a difference in the same sort of area of picks mm-hmm. just by playing smart really just by not going in my review for this game in my review for this game i say that every level has a very obvious path through it but then i go on to say that that obvious path is seldom the one you, the game wants you to take for maximum score and that is 
possibly one of the most astute things I have ever wrote about a game. <laughs> because the Modern obvious... Day Hemingway. If you go obvious from as early as Scream 4, I think it is, then you are not getting perfects. You are not getting perfect. So in some of these runs I did, I treat it almost every screen as my first... When I get there the first time, I'm just going to experiment with it and see if there is a quicker way. I did find some quicker ways. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's so good. It is such a good game and it deserved better. I would love to see a Pix the Cat 2. I, I really would. I think past the games need to get on it. I don't even know if past the games still exist. But they should because they made one of the finest games I have ever played. And it's just wonderful. I loved every second of this. Although what I will say is my score hit a plateau where I was unable to get near it by the end. (laughs) I just had to, like I said, after in the side quests after season one, it just has to come a point where you realize you've peaked. Exactly. And and just draw a line under it. And that's exactly what I've done. I've drew a line under picks. Right. I think we have talked this up. Mm -hmm. for for, We've actually filled a good bit of time there, like as as a prelude challenge i think yeah do now is we dissect as we watch what we're watching so what do we think yes let, let's let's get it i'm excited to see these i'm excited to see how everyone's done so the first one up is cardinal underscore smith underscore this is the start of cardinal smith's run i'm noticing that this video is six minutes and 13 seconds long i have no idea where this time is coming from <laughs> But I'm it's presuming he's kept his. Challenge. I'm presuming he's kept his score on the screen for a long time afterwards, which could come in handy because we didn't do that last week for Destruction All Stars. So maybe he's just making our job easier in his absence. So without any further ado, Tomahawk, let us hit play on Cardinal Smith's run in the Cat. I cannot wait to see this because even I remember he had little to no hope in this. He was just like, I think he had to buy the game. Yes, he did. So we could he, do the challenge. You said I bullied everyone in the group chat to buy this game. It turned out Cardinal had never bought this game before. <laughs> and it was oh. free on PlayStation Plus. It launched for free. There's absolutely no excuses for not having it. But he's did all right. That's the first two screens done. Uh, uh, nice and handy. Two perfects, yeah. Now, what he's not noticing is like to go into the rooms where the eggs are first. Because he's just it. having to... Oh, dear. <gasps> He's went the wrong oh way. With it. He's just completely. <laughs> He's restarting. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's went backwards on the third screen and ended up oh, backing himself into his tail. So in Picks the Cat, there's certain ways in which you can lose score. So one of them is crashing into a wall, crashing into an enemy, or as in Snake, crush... crashing into your own tail. If you do that, uh, any of those things, you lose all your ducklings and you're not able to score in this map at all. It is savage when it happens. I actually forgot about this mechanic as well. If you turn early when you're about to hit a wall, you'll get a flame, which boosts your multiplier just ever so slightly. And it's a really good way of getting up through the levels really fast. If you allow yourself... He's done it again. He's he's walked right into his tail. I think he's taking it in the chin this time. Yep. I also he's... found out as well that if you um if you're slow in like the corners and stuff, you lose your multiplier and you lose your speed. Yeah, every time the camera slows down like that, you lose a little bit of your multiplier every single time. So you don't want to be doing it at all. You need to be early in your turns, get that flame to get the a little the speed fl- boost. The, the boost. And he's doing this level like an absolute champ. Oh, he's done it again. Oh. He is back. Ah, he's not compensating for the ducks, and he just keeps on turning into himself. So right now, what's a screen six twenty nine thousand? It's not looking good for Cardinal Smith here. It's not an easy game, and he's went in backwards again. He's went in the wrong way, and he's realised. Love it. That's a quick, quick fix, mind. But it's eyes. Oh, he's... Oh, he's... He's, he's going the here, long but... way. He's going the long way around. This is. He's, he's went into an enemy. Yeah. 
and now he's just lost all sort of drive to continue. <laughs> I think he's just had a moment there just to swear to himself. himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's just well, sitting there going... We're two minutes in, three minutes, just over three minutes to go. He can mm-hmm. pull it back. He can get a score. Yeah, absolutely. It's not all that is how right, you right, right, go right. No, uh... no, Carl, he went. He turned left when he should have went right, and he would have had a perfect oh. in that level. But that is how you. This is the level I was talking about pre-record. I can figure the site. Now I know exactly how to do it. Just not what Cardinal did. Just <laughs> exactly what Cardinal did, but turn right. <laughs> that right. is heart- heartbreaking to watch there's a lot of errors in this a lot of avoidable ones too it, it just this, to turn- uh, this looks like a man who's used the control stick yes all <laughs> day long he's used his analog stick for this and it's a shame oh. Mr. Reliable could be in for a kicker I can only here. hope that someone's you can only hope that someone's done worse than him, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we are, but there's a hundred sec, hundred and fifteen seconds left, and he's on sixty thousand or thereabouts. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> he's he's all about banking little Points. and often. I don't think he's about. He's not really about getting the multipliers from the looks of things. Now he's kind of just a score on the board and hope for the best call it a day and I hope it's someone's done worse that's it he, I mean he he knows about banking your points which is good but I wonder if he knows about because the game tells you everything you need to know when the opening sort of when you load it up for the first time it tells you all the mechanics and what you need to do really um, it's just a load of combo breakers going on come on Cardinal this one's nice and simple this is actually the the screen where I realized you could attack the skulls. Ah, uh, yes. And do you notice I, the animation for the skulls change? They have Change. Like a, they go a, worried. A sweat on, and they have a sweat on their brow and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really, really subtle. I had no, I, no idea that that was a thing at all. Now, I think that's a, this, these little spiky dudes, that's a, they're really tough to deal with because like you may not have any ducks. Yeah. lined up but if you bump into them you instantly lose you crack on uh, them. yeah and so they, they're they, tough to they don't move you can't kill them either so no they don't move and you can't hurt them and it's one of those ones if you get a multiplier and it boosts your speed up at the wrong time you can't avoid them because your timing's completely off and he's lost all of his ducks here as well we've got 10 seconds now so oh dear 17 screens in, and he's lost all of his ducks in this one as well. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. This could be disaster for Cardinal because that score is 140.650. Oh, that is, I don't think, whatever way you look at it, that is a low, low score. A very low score. That's. It's a benchmark, if if nothing else. He's currently in first place. Yeah, well, I suppose that's why I'm looking at it. But look at his high score. His high I score. I think that's a pre. I think that's generic. a preset high score. Yeah. I was gonna say why well, not bank that one, but okay, that would make sense. Because that's seven hundred fifty thousand. That's a that's a, a score it's to be proud of. <laughs> it's a pretty square number, so it is. But yeah, so Cardinal, after what can only be described as a unmitigated disaster of a run. Is on one hundred forty thousand six hundred and fifty points. That is, eesh. I don't think if that was me, I'd be posting that score. No, I'd be giving it one more go. That's a, I think that's a panic score from the looks of it. That's definitely a. We'll see what we can do, and hope that someone does worse. But he posted this early on Sunday. It was posted. Uh, he... Early. On deadline day, that's right. So he's had most of the day to do it, but who knows? Who knows? I'm not going to lie. On, I think it was Friday, I was like, I haven't really played picks at all this week. And I went on Steam, and I was like, I could buy picks to cat 
and just use my Steam Deck to practice because I couldn't get near the TV because of the kids. <laughs> and I was that close, that close to buying Pixtacat on Steam just to practice. I can't use my Steam Deck for the challenge because there's no way of recording it. Um, but I was that, honestly, that close to just ban it for practice and hoping that I could replicate it. But then the opportunity arose and I was able to get a TV for three or four hours and I just sat there in silence, loving every minute of it. But Cardinal, Cardinal hasn't done any of the aforementioned ways to improve your score in Pixicat. He's posted a really low score. I think, I think it'll be hard to get a score lower than that. But we have seen Mr. John Sherry play games before. We have. <laughs> but I think even if Sherry, I think Sherry would have to go out of his way to get a score lower than that. Maybe it's just me. There only is one way to find out what John Sherry's score is, and that is let us get John Sherry's run up on the screen and let's find out, because I'm excited now. This is Sherry's attempt of it. Let's see if he has performed as badly as Cardinal Smith. I, I doubt it. I, <laughs> I, I very much doubt it. However, it is Sherry. The man is renowned for one and done on these challenges. Doing one run, no matter how good or how bad it is, he goes with it, uploads it, and then just wipes see you next his hands week. on it. I'll see. <laughs> no, not even see us next week. I'll give you more gameplay next week. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll be done with it. What a, what Let's a have a look. Let's but, have a look, see what the man can do here. I want to see what his um, strategy is. I want to see what his strategy is. Because I know Sherry played a wee bit of this back in the day. Not much. Um, but he knows about the early turns they get the flames, which is nice. But he didn't do it the second time. But let's find out. This, this level's really simple. Two straight rows of eight ducks. Nice and easy. There's, the only thing you can go wrong in that first level is if you turn too early and give yourself extra squares to cover and then because he, he moves so slowly it can cost you massively in the long run but look at this he's making this look easy two perfects in a row beautiful he's already on near thirteen thousand points and here he goes just collecting Slick. ducks very smooth no he's doing it beautifully he's like a he's taking pro. every he's taking every little speed uh bit that he can as yep, well and that's ex he's going for all the little bonuses i missed them himself oh well, it's okay though he's getting the the perfect here is again the third perfect in a row he's almost one th he's almost one third of cardinal score really but he's messed this one up you can't do that in this one because it's too obvious so you can't you can't get a perfect if you do that yeah Beautiful. that took me a, actually... it, it took me a couple of minutes to realize how to actually get the perfect on that level and it annoyed me when i realized how in your Simple face, it is? was. Yeah, yeah. It's it is really really easy because they're in a, a pretty much a straight path for you. You don't really need to do anything too strenuous to get it. But yeah, I was just seeing him to kick up. Yeah, you forget that you could just you can go through the wee circle like the wee targets without having any ducks and doesn't penalize you. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, here we go. One hundred thousand points elapsed. He he knows this one as well. Go back through the level. And take the shortcut rather than go the whole way around the big C shape, which takes forever. By the way, going around the little pathway That's it wants you to take. It. Going around the C shape is ridiculous as well. Plus, it's the only level that doesn't like zoom in to have a oh, close up on. No. Oh no, he's got oh, himself. Oh no! Oh, he's, oh dear! He knew he was snickered, and he's went and took all of his ducks out, apart from five. Oh, that's going to cost him massively in the score stakes. Um, but he's well, already surpassed as a, Cardinal. As that's I Cardinal score. Say, yes, we're on a hundred and sixty-six thousand. Yep. So yeah, we're, he's firmly in first place now. Anyway, he's <laughs> firmly in first right now. He's looking at the big three point dos. Um, <laughs> I I don't know if he'll be there by the end, but he certainly I, he can live in a hope, performance here. Again, I think these boys just kind of want to bank points and it doesn't matter about their combos. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just thinking, just, just get as a high score as we can without worrying too much about perfection, really. He's going to snicker himself. Yeah. Ah, it's a shame. But yeah, it took me ages to realize as well, these maps with the curved corners, you can run into them. It doesn't have any 
penalty for you? It'll just throw you All around. Right. Yeah. Take me along. We were... Oh, dear. Uh, uh, it's nearly, geez. nearly disaster there. I probably would have done the same in that sort of scenario. Just get out of that with as many ducks as possible. I think he's on the right thing. It's exactly what I would have done. What? Now, what he's doing is when he do when he drops his multiplier, he's straight back in. He's sort of always on that threshold of the times ten. So, y yeah, he's, he's never he's... too far behind, like maintaining the multipliers. But he's hair but a scholar. He had nowhere to there. nowhere to go, and he double guess himself. It's a shame. But he's doing oh, just too nice. slow on his reflexes. He's he actually. I don't know how many runs he did. I think if he had given himself a couple more, he would have got a super impressive score. Oh, so we're down really, to like... I think he, he... 60 seconds now. I think, yeah, I know what you mean. Start to have definitely put, if he put a few more efforts in, a few more runs in, he's going to get himself caught. He's done it again. He's done it again. He's ticked all of his ducks out. So now he's just going to progress to the next level with absolutely very little multiplier. Pex is moving very slow. And just, yeah, he's just, he's cost himself. Same, pretty much the same as Cardinal. Just, when he gets into that situation where and he can't find the exit point, that's what the problem is here. He it, can't is see it, actually... it is actually very small. I think I did the same thing in that map a couple of times before I realized where it was. It's like, where's the exit? But the ad exit points but, can be very, very small. But that's a one in, one out on that level as well. So you do have to keep an eye to it. Mm hmm. There's very few levels that do that. Usually, like this one has four four entrance exit points, whereas some of them do only have one way in, one way out, and it can get you a bit stuck. Yeah, he's stuck here. Uh, he's stuck there. But here, fair play. That is, I think it was. Let's find out what it was. Three hundred thousand something. Anyway, it's not. That's that's not. That's, it's not a bad score. It's good enough for the purposes of a podcast, isn't it? That's it. He he's put a for not knowing he's put, for not knowing everyone else's. He's put a good old score up there now. So that's three hundred and thirty nine thousand and fifty points. It's not it's not terrible. It's enough to put Cardinal down to second place after two runs. <sighs> I, mean, I mean that's just it. That's that's exactly it. And a good few. I think it's in there very well. much. That's it. It's very much. Uh, I think a few more efforts. Could have been onto half a mil, really. Could have been onto a much bigger score there as well, with just a couple more smarter decisions, or even just like a better grasp of the the layouts as well. Because yeah. they don't change an awful lot, but it just kind of you have to keep <clears throat> have to keep the attention on. I think. Yeah, I mean, all he has to do there is clean up, and he would have got a much higher score. I, another run at that, I have no doubt in my mind, he would have cleaned up his run, and he would have. As you say, at least he would be on there for at least half a million, at least. Because as you say, his multiplier was always kept relatively high until he lost all of his ducks. Um, and there's, yeah, he could have got a, he could have got a nice score if he had a hard time get a weak score on the board. I think he put this up quite late on on Sunday, which could be a part of the reason. But he was worried about missing the deadline. But I don't know, it's Sherry. He's probably. Done I, a couple it, of right. runs and then just took his best one, which is fair enough. It's what we all did. <laughs> Only I had a lot of runs, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. Too much, too much. So that's um, not too bad. After two, after two games, there's Sherry first, Cardinal second. We're mm -hmm. sitting pretty at the halfway point. I do have a feeling we're. And I'm not saying this because the two of us are here today. Mm -hmm very much coming up to the big guns now that's it that's it <laughs> i i don't know about you but i counted three perfect boards on sherry so three does three. yeah the first i think at least the first three and mm -hmm. then maybe struggled a bit afterwards yeah but perfect you know perfect mm -hmm. is a perfect no matter where it is that is it absolutely shall we get on to your <sighs> run i'm yeah. very i'm nervous now well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not nervous, really, but I'm nervous for um, for what Cardinal kid? and Sherry. I, so, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I mean, I think Cardinal's looking at a another blank week here. I think. Oh dear. Just that's right. just 
it's just the impression that I get to quote the mighty mighty boss totes. <laughs> right. right, let's get your run up, Tomahawk. Let's go. Let's keep let's... this tree in a rolling. Let us go. Are you ready for this? Tomahawk, no. this is your <laughs> moment. Your perfect moment to quote Martin McCutcheon. I mean, it says a lot when I've gone Pixicat, Tomahawk, actual, which <laughs> would know. be an indicator of how many runs I've had at this game. So uh, without further ado, I suppose we'll, uh, we'll get this over with. Let's have a make, look, see. Let's make history. Let's go. So here we go. Talk. <laughs> You're composing I yourself the there, voice. I so did I. I also so changed I. the voiceover for it as well. Yes, plus I, it's amazing that the countdown doesn't start until you move mm -hmm. a directional button. So I was just like, I'm just going to play this cool here and see how how we go. Yeah. So you went... this took me a, we, a, a yeah. This took me a long time to realize that it's best to always be going from the side where you have a feeling where the portals are going to open up. <laughs> Second screen or third screen made a oh mess of dear. it. Quick we restart just like Cardinal did. You're no better than Cardinal. <laughs> no, not at all, but I thought I was smart enough to hide it in the edit. <laughs> nope. No, you are not. You left it there for the whole world to see, and the whole world has seen it now because obviously our listenership is seven billion people each and every week. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. They all they all know that I'm a failure at uh snake based duck hunting. With a cast. That's, that was an interesting pathway through that. Very interesting indeed. Straight up one side and then sneak your way around the rest. Interesting. I like it. Different. So you went for the angry gamer voice. I did, I changed, yes. I changed mine, went for the female one. Um I thought it was the coolest one to be fair to it. That's another interesting route through that level. Well done. Really efficient. See, it doesn't look like it, but actually watching this, the controller, the actual like directional buttons are quite responsive, but playing it did not feel this smooth. It actually was quite anxiety ridden. Yeah, yeah. But we're, this, the ship is uh, pretty steady. We surpassed Cardinal Smith's score, which is quite nice. Yeah. All perfect this so is far as well. This is the bit that threw you, I believe. This is the, the, the I couldn't figure this out at all. I had to go, I had to go the long way around. Yeah. Oh, fever time. And Love then fever it. time kicks, fever time kicks in oh. at the worst possible moment. It for always me. does. Always does. It is a nightmare. And it's just that screen flash when it starts as well, completely catches you off guard and you can cost you big time. That is wonderful. Wonderful picks playing there, Tom. Well done. I could not figure that out at all. I had a fair idea I had to use those portals to get it, but I just couldn't figure out how to use the portals effectively. Well done. Using the portal was an absolute panic at that time. It really, really took me a few playthroughs to realize if you're stuck, try and get the portal to get yourself out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. And... I think fever fever time continues as long as you can maintain a multiplier. It yep. doesn't time out. So nope. the problem is now I'm in panic stations pretty much for the remainder of this run now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard going. It's people don't appreciate just how fast Pix is moving and how hard it is on your reflexes to keep them going in, in fever time mode. It doesn't lick much faster when you're watching it. But in actuality, it's probably twice as fast as the next speed. And it becomes hard to time your turns and all this here business. But I'm in trouble here, I think. Because this is very, very, very impressive, Tom. Very impressive indeed. I think this levels. is like my, this was my Hail Mary. I love a, love a says he's going to suppress his final submission until five minutes before the deadline i was like oh i need i need to get my skates on here i think i said three minutes before deadline time so you <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah the, there was an issue with the game you said earlier on the day that it wasn't uploading 
to your correct score, and I thought, well, he's talking big game, his high score is the one on the game. But no, there is a delay in it. It only seems to update like once every hour or something. So while your local leaderboard will update in real time. <gasps> oh, nightmare there. But here, 1.2 million is with a minute to go. Unreal. Panic station set in big time there, I think. And then I was just, I think at this point, maybe I've done enough. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Dear. I think it's a lot of coattails being ridden at this last couple of levels now. <laughs> I find this level really hard. And I don't know why. There was just very little leeway between the walls and the duck points. Yeah, yeah no, no I know exactly what you mean. Points. I just, I'm banking points. I'm not yeah. getting into any nonsense here now because it's just getting hectic. But 30 seconds, in, I think this is a, at this point was the furthest I'd ever gotten. Okay. You're doing uh, well. Oh, your and I made a is... point just to, just basically to go, right, still maintain, try and maintain perfect rounds, mm -hmm. but be banking as many points i try not to get i'm trying not to get a fever time again because i just know it'll appear at the worst possible moment yeah and it's going and to at appear this point, any the, minute here <laughs> the 10 seconds came in and i was just like don't care put anything that you can just it's not even about collecting eggs it's about depositing eggs because the deposit yeah. eggs is what gets you your scores yep and that's just it that is just it that is a hell of an impressive score mate I think I have 1,375,000 dead. I don't know how you got a score with no <laughs> odds, but fair play to you, mate. That is, that's seriously impressive. Sure, what? 25 that's levels deep. I counted 18 perfects. Oh, wowie. As well, it's a good that thing is... We're not, it's a good thing we're not measuring perfects as a, it, as a score a metric. I might have uh, it bagged really some points is. there. <laughs> It really 18 perfects like a 25 that is seriously impressive seriously I mean, impressive i mean it was tight between me and sherry i mean i only edged him up by a cool million but <laughs> unchanged <laughs> but here you, right now you're you're leading you're in Oof. you're in the lead there is one more run Watching to go back. but unfortunately for you that one run to go is the big dog it's me. It's the titan of picks the cat. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that. Like, I don't know if I'm that. I think my highest score prior to this was like 870,000. Just, but enough of this. Let's get into it, mate. Let's just get there. I think just rip the band aid off. Let's, let's have just a look. Go. We'll see where the points are going to go this week and how it's going to affect the. Uh, High scores, high stakes, league table. So this is my rub. <laughs> and I'm using my ghost. Uh, that ghost was my previous high score. Uh, my strategy here is stay ahead of my ghost, which should lead to me beating my previous high score. And this is just what I do. I am going out of my way. You'll notice that I'm hugging walls and stuff. I am just trying to get as many fire boosts to my... Uh, multiplier as i possibly can because the fire makes a big old difference you'll notice every time you do it the speed in which your multiplier increases That's increases a big jump really it makes is. a big one in this here level i'm going through so what i my plan for most of these was if you see a shape it's kind of odd find a rectangle in it and follow the rectangle way it just minimizes running into your own tail this level took me way longer to figure out than i would care to admit the amount of times I did this level and didn't get a perfect because I didn't run past one of these targets with like ducks is frightening. And then this is it. I hate it, this map. <laughs> I hate yeah, this it, one this was, map. This took me a long, long time to kind of figure it out. And I think playing it just is, playing through it induces anxiety. So. Yeah, it's, it's these middle two. You know, if you're a half a second late, then you're you're gonna break your multiplier. However, I don't know about you, Tomahawk, but when I was playing this in other runs, if you have all your ducks and you see that last level, if there's a egg beside a target, if you run through the target, but you pick up the egg before the duck goes through that target, it doesn't break your multiplier. 
Okay. And Your I, favorite I time's what, coming really early. I don't know if this it's would a worry bug me now. or whatever. I wouldn't because you got a perfect this level and there's a lot of duck eggs. I couldn't figure it out. I'm just trying to figure out. Like maybe if I go longer, it gives me more to run back on. And it's like I wouldn't have enough room to turn around, so I'm just gonna have to take a hit here. <laughs> um, it's a a massive hit, but we'll get back to fever time. Don't you worry, it's coming really, really soon. But I just decided fever to play time. it safe. <laughs> like it, but it just is always comes in when you're. You know it's coming, and then you think it's going to come in the worst part possible, and it always does. But it always does. We adapt, <laughs> we improvise. It's, but I think what's really good about it is it's not just the timed thing, and you have to build up to it again. As long as you can maintain a multiplier, you can yep. be on fever time infinitely, definitely, indefinitely. It, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool mechanic, but it does happen at the worst time every single time. And as you say, you know it's happening, um, but you just can't. Pl properly plan, plan for, it. for it and it's a bit of a nightmare when it happens the way it does i forgot about that as well i totally got myself into a cluster there <laughs> nightmare but it yeah but we're here we did all right Six hundred thousand was still two minutes to go we're still plenty of time on it as i said at the start this is close really close <laughs> i well, near messed that I can up see that we're we're first and second at least anyway from from yep. what the score suggests, we're just over six, seven hundred thousand. We've just ticked over to. Yep. And we're we're going good guns. Fever times back, keeping it there. The amount of times I lost my ducks in that second turn, by the way, is frightening. And I, this is it. Oh yes, yes. I can't get my ducks, so I'm just going to take out them. Still collect points, keep my multiplier high, whilst I get myself back on track here and i miss a target which is an absolute disaster class but all we need to do is pick it up here so fever time here as you said earlier on does not help you with those spiky things they will take your multiplier away from you with no bother whatsoever like that absolutely stunning we're down to the last That's... minute i'm coming up to the one million mark and oh, it's, it's it's very tight now it's gonna be close mate it is super, super close. You won't believe how close this is. You must rack up some serious pointage in this next couple of levels, at least anyway now. Yeah, I mess it up. My, my pathing in this run, believe it or not, is I did runs way better pathing, but just for some reason couldn't get to this score again. And this is a messy, messy run watching it back. Yours was way cleaner than mine. You're way more efficient with your movement than I was. But our scores aren't separated by a massive amount. Although I do make sure I go out my way to get every single skull that I can, <laughs> just for the easy ten thousand points. For ten thousand points, like why would you not? Like to be honest. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh god, yeah, that is. Up. We're ticking over to one point three million now. It's. Oh god, mm -hmm. I am actually getting worried here now. It, it's it's you won't believe how close this this turns out to be. It is a wee bit mad. And I think if I didn't mess that up, I would have beat you. <laughs> but that is it. So I also got 1.3 million. Um, but I think I got 1,000, 1,300,000, 33, and 450. Oh. So there is 40,000 points between me and you, which sounds like a massive, massive amount. But I think you got three maps deeper than I did. You got the level twenty one. You finished. Yeah, I got the I mean, level 18, eighteen for yourself. So for all the sins, I think I kept fever time for an awful long time. I got an achievement in that for keeping fever time. I think for three or I think it was keep it for a hundred and sixty seconds or something like that. There, um, for that run, okay. I wasn't I wasn't counting my perfects there, but I think it was about twelve. I think it was about twelve. Well, um, into a dozen there, yeah. Yeah, it was a good run, but. You can see from watching that back where I could have cleaned it up, and I tried. I played this. Game There's for... some erratic movement in it, but it's still clean. Like for the most part, as well, you're still getting perfect. You're still getting a lot of bonuses. You're still getting your yeah. that we skid, like that we skid bonus as well. The skid bonus plays a massive role in it because it it just bumps his and especially early it bumps his speed up. He starts painfully slow. 
any sort of misstep when you're moving that slow, you might as well just restart. I restarted this game on the first screen. I'm not even going to tell you how many times because I don't know. It was loads because I turned too early or I did something equally stupid. I like missed a duck or whatever. And the first screen's a killer. If you don't nail that first screen, which there's no excuse not to, to be fair, um, but that first screen's a killer. The amount of times I mess up a first screen, play through it, and then wind up with like 700,000, despite being way cleaner afterwards than, than this run, the first screen's a killer. Yeah. And it's just, it's one of those games where I just kept on playing and playing and playing, trying to get to 1.4 million. Because I had a funny feeling. I saw um, there's a leaderboards in this game. You can check your friend scores. But as, as I said, they don't seem to update in real time. They don't update in real time. They just don't. Um, and you said that your score hadn't updated. At first, I thought it was a elaborate ruse by you. Um, oh, to, to force you into stressing yes, yourself out. Yes. <laughs> um, but then I happened to notice... And I was going to upload my score. So I went to upload my score onto the shared YouTube channel at about 11. And then I realized, oh, hold on, Tom's got another upload here. <laughs> he has beat his. <laughs> I need to go back. And I went back and I think I uploaded mine at about, I played it for a couple of hours beforehand to see if I can bump the score up. Because I, I had a funny feeling you were going to be the one closest to me. Um and I was like, I need to get to, I don't know why, but I had like 1.4 million was my number I was shooting for this whole time. 1.4 million, 1.4 million. Because I think the world leader in this is 2.2 million. So we're not. We're not we a are, million miles off, but we're, we're, we're to get that extra, far off. Yeah. To get that what, extra 1 million, you know, the skill ceiling you're going, is ridiculously high. Um, but no, good challenge. Really good challenge. I really enjoyed it. In the end, I deleted pics off my hard drive, not because I didn't enjoy it, but the, for the exact opposite. I knew if it stays on my PlayStation 5's hard drive, every time I turn it on, I will go, I'll play a game of You'd picks. Be tempted to play it. And all, then yes. there'll be two hours later, and I'll still be playing picks, and nothing else will get played. And that is why I had to purge <laughs> my PlayStation. No, I was picks. the same. I, sent, I think I sent the video into. Like, I'm doing this for my own, I'm doing this for my own safety. Yes. I'm not doing this because I'm thrown in the towel. I'm doing this because I need to cleanse myself of it and be done with this. Be done with this challenge in a good way. Really. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. What a challenge. What a what a game. I, I said it in the preamble. To this. I'm gonna say it again. If you're listening to this or watching this, and you'll think I might like that game, give it a go. It is dirt cheap and it is incredible and it's up there with some of the best console puzzlers I have ever played and I do not say that lightly I do not say that lightly um the review for this is one of the most glowing I have ever written it is just incredible um but speaking of incredible hi what were the scores what does that mean for the league table tomahawk so what it means is this the running order is the reverse of where the points are going. <laughs> so in fourth place, with a miserly score, a Ebenezer Scrooge of a score, is Cardinal Smith with 140,650 points. So he gets zero points. Sherry has come in third, and he has scored 339,050 points, netting him one point. I have come in second, I have got 1,333,450 points, which means I get two points. And then you, Tom, have come in in the another W, another W, with 1,375,000 points dead. I still don't know how you that did actually that. actually is. It's that incredible. Is just a how? nice whole number. <laughs> how? So that means that after picks the cat, after episode eight, episode eight, we have four more to go. It's mental how quick this is going. So yeah. the league table right now looks like this. You are in first place with 28 points. I am in second place with 22 points. Uh, Cardinals in third place, stuck on 20 for the third week in a row, I believe. Yep. And... Sherry is slowly creeping. Uh, he is fourth on 12 points. But Sherry, this season, 
is doing something that he didn't do at all last season, which is he has picked up points, I think. Yeah, the last two weeks. He's picked up points in consecutive weeks. Well, we, things you love to see, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yep. It's going to be interesting. The gap between me and you has grown, but there's still plenty of games to be played, still plenty of points to be earned, and more importantly for you, plenty of points to be dropped, Tom. And next week's is oh, a dear. very, very, very exciting challenge. I think it's the best we have ever come up with on this podcast. It's not your normal game that you would associate with challenge gameplay, nor is the challenge itself something that's obvious. But I think we have well and truly milked this cow of all the value you can get from it. <laughs> Unless you have anything to add about picks. No, I, I love the game. I love everything about the game. I probably will download it again back onto the hard drive and just let it stew for a while. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm just going to bask in my three points for a little while while yep. we move to the next section. <laughs> yep, I have made my love for this game, I think, evident throughout this podcast episode. But you know I haven't made it evident? My love for the wrap-up section. So let's get there. <laughs> that is a wrap. Episode 8 is all wrapped up, Tom. And do you know what it's wrapped up like? A Christmas present. Bottle. Christmas is not around the corner. Do you know what it is? Halloween. Halloween, baby. And do we have something special lined up for that? When we were organizing this series, this season, we looked at the calendar and realized that one week was going to coincide with Halloween. And it is this week. So we have taken our schedule and we have given... A special Halloween twist. A Halloween special of sorts, Tomahawk. A Halloween special. So we have taken, honestly, the one of the finest games ever made. <laughs> it really is. The game, the game for Halloween is going to be Resident Evil Remake HD Remaster. <laughs> and the challenge is... I think it's genius. I think the challenge is genius. Something different, definitely. It's not our conventional no challenge, to say the least. No, it's not your sort of challenge you would associate with Resident Evil. Resident Evil's probably not even a game many people would associate with challenge gameplay beyond speedrun on it. Um, but that's not what we're doing. What we're going to do is this. We're going to impose a 20-minute limit on every single one of our runs. And what we have to do is we have to Get as many key items as we can. So, 20 minutes. How many key items can you collect in Resident Evil? The scoring system is the same as always going to be. 3, 2, 1, 0. So, whoever gets the most key items will get 3 points. Whoever gets the least will get 0 points. But wait, there's more. For every key item we collect in that 20 minutes, we will get 1 bonus point per key item. And then, because we're having a feast of Halloween, a feast of horror... We're going to zest it up a little bit more. We're going to give a wee bit of jus on the side. Dip it into. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what we're going to do is, for every three bullets in your character's inventory, at the end of the 20 minutes, will be one extra bonus point. So if you have nine bullets in your character inventory, and only your character inventory, not the infinite boxes, for every three bullets, you will get one point. So if you have nine bullets in your character inventory, you'll get three bonus points. There is an absolute mountain of points to be got here. And it's going to be an incredible watch. But in the argument of fairness, we have to come to a consensus of what a key item is. So... Luckily for you, Tom, I've done my homework this episode. Uh, I have done my homework. It. So this is my list, Tom, of what we will consider key items. So all these items on this table are easily achievable. They're all early game items um, in the game. I think if we are fast enough, we could get quite a lot of these, if not all of them. I'm also noticing that I have forgotten Death Mask 4. So Death Mask 4 is also there. So there is a potential of 27 items up for grabs. So that is a potential of 27 
bonus that's points. A lot. <laughs> it's it's a lot. Um, high level speedrunners are able to get most of these items, if not all of them, in about fifteen minutes. No one in this podcast is a high level <laughs> speedrunner, so I don't know what a good score is, but there is the potential here for gaps to be created or gaps to be closed. So just to reiterate, reiterate what the challenge is for next week, it's Resident Evil HD Remaster. It is a scavenger hunt of sorts for key items. And for every key item you get, we one bonus point. And then there are one bonus point up for grabs for every three bullets in your character's inventory at the end of the 20 minutes. It is going to be a new way of playing Resident Evil. This is going to sure. ruin my life, definitely. Because <laughs> not only like is it about bullet economy, it's a scavenger hunt. Like I hate scavenger hunts at the best of times. I hate them when they're in the real world. Never mind. You're forced to pick every item up and examine every item. You see, there is... <sighs> The key to this challenge is going to be optimization. It is getting into the mansion, familiarizing yourself with the layout and where these items are and how do you get from point A to point B in the quickest possible route. The killer in this run is going to be door opening and as you say, inventory opening to examine items because every single, if you find an item, the examination will have an associated animation with it so that is that is the challenge i think it's a cracker i think it's fitting for our first halloween as a podcast i can think of oh, no yes. better way to celebrate halloween than playing resident evil hd remaster remake it's going to be incredible make sure you're here for it everyone listening make sure you're here for it because it's going to be i think it could be really close there's two ways of taking this challenge do you go for the key items or do you go run and look for bullets because both will get you legitimate points. And I'm excited to see what everyone does because I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly how I'm tech tackling this. Says game. the man who's put in about 50 man hours playing this game so far. QA and challenges and whatnot. Well, to be fair, the QA for this challenge I put in 20 minutes. Because I wanted to see <laughs> if it was I wanted to see if it was doable. It is doable. It's it's more than doable. Um, and I would say, yeah, over the course of since this game released in two thousand and two, I have put way more than fifty hours into this game. It is, it's my, it's probably my favorite game of all time. It's just incredible. It is incredible, but it'll be good crack. Um, and you never know, I could choke or somehow forget where everything is in Resident Evil. You never know. <laughs> Who but knows? This sounds like a challenge tailor made for Mister Lover Lover. <laughs> I believe we took these challenges and uh, agreed on them by right, committee. Very democratic, yeah. <laughs> so that just leaves us with one thing to do, which is to get to the social wrap-up. So let's get there now, mate. That is it. Now that the listeners now know what the challenge is, all we do is tell them, challenge them to something. And the simple <laughs> challenge is, if you're liking the podcast, if you like what we're trying to do here, then the easiest way of supporting us is liking the podcast, it's sharing the podcast, it's subscribing to wherever you're watching or listening to this thing on. Just make sure you hit the click click that wee button. Um, the more ears we get on this, the better for everyone. The more we can do, the more you get to listen to. And that's, that's the easiest way to do it. If you're listening to this on Spotify or watching this on Spotify, underneath every episode, we have a poll, we have a Q&A. Again, if you want to take a couple of minutes out, write a re-response to the Q&A, which usually... It's either a joke question or it's a legitimate, what do you like about this podcast? It's a way of your voice being heard. Uh, we will listen to any voices. We want to make this as good a podcast as we possibly can. And the easiest way of doing that is on Spotify, answering the Q&A, answering the polls. If you don't subscribe to Spotify, you listen to somewhere else like Apple or Google or wherever it might be, get on over to anchor.fm forward slash high scores, high stakes. The Q&As are there, the polls are there. You can answer them there. It's nice and easy. There's no need to log in or no need to make an account. Um, it is the easiest way to support us. It's the easiest way. And it allows us to know how we can make this better. Or if you don't like sections, then we can sort of change them around or get rid of them all, all together. Let us know what you like, and more importantly, what you don't like, so we can change it up. Because this is an ever-evolving podcast, Tomahawk. We, Absolutely. To stay stationary is a fool's errand. 
Um, if you have done all that and you still want more high scores, high stakes, where can you go? You can go to Discord. The link is in the description of below. So it is so over in Discord we have a channel for pretty much every episode. You can do every challenge we've ever done. You can upload scores there and you can get into the leaderboard on the Discord server. Um there's loads and loads of servers, one for every challenge. There's also the What Are You Playing server, which is I think it's easy to say it's the, it's the most popular one where there's people chatting about what they're playing pretty much well quite a lot um slagging you off about what you're doing in your super massive games runs and that's not just me <laughs> <laughs> but people have a have a problem when it's teenagers being murdered they have a, a bit of an issue with the choices you make on that and that seems to be the thread of the thread of conversation these days so that's it that is it join that... in and change that please someone <laughs> change the narrative <laughs> uh, we are also on twitter or x or whatever elon's calling it this weather uh we are at h scores h stakes there we do lots of stuff we do this day on playstation where we take a look through the past releases of playstation uh we do a lot of jokey meme things we do a lot of stuff we're just there are a lot talking about games with like-minded people if you want to join in those conversations get over there hit the follow button and give us a wee follow we are also on instagram instagram.com forward slash high scores high stakes podcast there we do a lot of the same stuff there's lots of reels where it is recapping previous episodes there are the the challenges condensed down into handy one minute videos there is loads of memes there's loads of pictures there's loads of a lot of good stuff on the instagram the instagram there's a lot of work goes into that so if you want to follow us you can find us there you can also find us on TikTok, again, like Instagram. Uh, a lot of short form videos, obviously, it's TikTok. Um, but it might be stuff you've seen from previous episodes. It might also be some behind the scenes. It's also some little bits and snippets. There's a lot, again, a lot of stuff going on on TikTok. Uh, get yourself over there. If you are listening to this and you wish, you're just sitting there with your earphones in or your earbuds and you're going, I wish I could see these games that these guys are playing. I'm sure they're watching something. Get yourself over to the YouTube. Watch the video version there. Um, it's free. Hit the subscribe button when you're there. Thank you very much. Uh, but there you can see pretty much every episode we've done um, in full 1080p. You can watch the gameplay challenges and see the podcast the way it was intended to be seen. And then finally, finally, we have come to Twitch. Oh, YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at high scores high stakes. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it? That would be a good <laughs> idea, yes. Yeah. Searching blindly in the dark for <laughs> high score content. <laughs> and then finally, we are also on twitch.tv, twitch.tv forward slash high scores high stakes. There we will have no schedule whatsoever, but you will see fairly irregularly one of us playing a game. Now, the game could be something we're playing casually in our own time. It could be a challenge game. It could be a previous challenge or an upcoming one. Uh, but we'll, we we plan to be there individually. You'll never see all four of us on a stream at the same time because it's hard enough to get all four of us together to record a podcast, as you can do clearly the see. Exactly, yes. Um, but we will be playing games, and it's just another good way of getting more content from us four. So... If you like a sign of any of that, please do go on over and consider giving us a follow, a subscribe, or a like, or whatever it might be. If you are feeling extra sassy and you want to go above and beyond, a wee review on whatever platform you're listening to us on will go a long way. Don't know what to do. No idea. No one seems to know what to do, but everyone asks for them, no. so so are we. Give us a star review, whatever you think we deserve. And if you're feeling particularly energetic, you can type a little review. I'm not saying give us a five star, but give us a wee five star. That'd be really lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, give, us a, uh, give us a one star. We'll call you on it. We'll we'll hash we'll, it out. We'll bring you onto the podcast and discuss that one star review. <laughs> yep, yep, yes. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's it. I think I'm getting pretty good at this. We socials round up. It's getting pretty smooth. But that is it. We have nothing left to say, except for one more thing. I have been Mister Lover Lover. This has been High Scores High Stakes. We'll see you on Monday, one day before Halloween. Love you all. Bye. Happy to say.